I had a good answer for you, uh, I would solve a problem that's been plaguing conservation biology for a very long time. T-Town's animal ambassadors are all animals that for one reason or another are not releasable in the wild. Uh, they couldn't survive. So they have a new life as an education animal. What a wonderful way uh, for an animal that wouldn't survive in the wild to be able to be a part of teaching and to see the reaction of these kids. You know, that's the best proof of the impact that the animals are able, able to have. There's so much that I can teach them with words, but it doesn't really have the same effect. I see that because sometimes I talk about something to a group and I don't have a live animal. And the times that I do have a live animal, they're so much more engaged. They're having a connection with the animal on some level. A lot of times you can just see it even in their expression. It's not something that I can do without that support of that animal ambassador. I really like animals and learning about them, and I think the stories are interesting. And it always makes me happy that they got help when they needed it, and they were able to survive and, be, and teach kids about how to treat birds well. Mortimer is a crowd favorite. Uh, Mortimer was a solid owl that was found roadside. Man driving down a dark, deserted country road, uh, middle of nowhere, January snow on the ground, saw something moving on the side of the road. Uh, so he stopped his car and got out and he found Mortimer, the little saw wet, uh, standing by the side of the road, uh, scooped him up, took him home. He had no broken bones, it was just his left eye. Uh, it's been 17 years and he still can't see out of that eye and he probably never will still. Because of one man's unselfish act within the past 17 years, about half a million people have seen Mortimer, people who've never seen a saw wet before, so he's a really popular bird. When they see the animal, they open up in a way. They become aware and they have empathy. And once you have the empathy, you have the heart, you have the emotion, then the knowledge can follow. We have to find a compromise where we may accept we have less wildlife than once existed, but that we maintain what we do have and we can maybe improve what we have with the right information, the right knowledge, the right sustainable practices. When they see an animal and they, and they know that an animal can be harmed by things that they may toss or um, if a habitat is degraded, then they, they feel a little bit more kinship and with that kinship comes, I think, protection. When I talk about something as small as a salamander that they get to meet and have a connection with directly, I bring the conversation full circle around to how that animal and its environment matters, how it's important, how it helps us learn about water quality, um, and ultimately who is water important to people. I think the interesting thing about the Westchester region is that it's, an, it's a great example of a region that's fairly well developed, fairly highly developed, I should say, in terms of how many people live here. And it's, it's at the front lines of how do we as people live with biodiversity without affecting it negatively. Some people who don't really know what they're, who don't really consider how bad they, what they're doing is, they destroy the habitats for the animals and it's good to have places where the animals can stay and be safe and where no one can cut down their trees and so they don't have to be afraid that their home will just get destroyed.